Hey everyone, welcome to Hit the Books. This is a new series on my channel where I'll review baking books from my gigantic collection. I want to show you how to read recipes and see if something is wrong there, because trust me, in many cases it is not your fault. So we're starting with this dessert of the day book. We'll start with a simple cranberry pear crumble. First get six firm but ripe pears. Then get 235 grams of all-purpose flour. Then get 125 grams of sugar. Then salt, ground cinnamon. Then get 120 grams of cold unsalted butter. Cut it in small cubes, but do not do what I did here. This is dangerous, do it on the board. Next, we're gonna get cranberries, about 125 grams. Then we're gonna take about one tablespoon of cornstarch and finally 155 grams of sugar. Now let's make crumble. First add all dry ingredients to a large bowl. So that's flour, 125 grams of sugar, about quarter teaspoon of salt and about half teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Once done, mix everything really well. Now let's take our very cold butter and add it to the dry ingredients. It's important to work really fast right now. I'm making crumble with my hands, but you can use a stand mixer if you have one. Just use paddle attachment, maybe keep it in a freezer or in a fridge for about half an hour before making that. Once you reach this wet sand texture, you're done. You can take it a little bit further to the sort of larger crumbs, but I prefer to stay here this time. Keep it in a fridge, uh, while we're dealing with fruit. Now let's prepare the filling. First, peel, core, and dice the pears. Cube size should be about one to two centimeters because if they're too small, they will just disappear. But if they're too big, they will not cook in time. Next, we'll take the cranberries and add them to the pears. Now, we also need to mix everything really well together, but be careful here because you don't want to squeeze the fruit too much or they'll turn into mush. Now, take the cornstarch and mix it with sugar really well so that it will prevent the cornstarch from going lumpy once you add it to the fruit. Now, again, mix everything really well. And the next step would be to bake it. Preheat the oven to 350F or 180C. Grab a baking dish about 9 by 13 inches and you can butter or grease it, but I just kept it as is. Pour our fruit mixture inside and then grab the crumble from the fridge, make sure it's still cold, and then just spread it over the fruit, making sure there are no gaps left anywhere. Bake it for 45 to 50 minutes. Watch the top, it should be golden brown. Now it's time to taste it. I usually eat crumbles when they're still warm, so that's why I see a lot of steam coming out. But you can absolutely eat it at room temperature. As I was loading my plate with crumble, I actually realized that it would be nice to have something creamy to serve it with. So I decided to whip up some cream just plain, no sugar, no uh, sweetener. However, you could add some icing sugar or vanilla extract if you wanted to add some flavor to it. You could also serve it with ice cream or creme anglaise or custard. That would be a nice combination as well. So I added a generous blob of whipped cream to my plate and now we're ready to taste. As I take a bite of the crumble, the first thing that comes to my mind is this amazing contrast in flavors and textures. The lightly crisp crumble works great with the tender pears underneath. And the cranberries, they add a nice burst of flavor, cutting through the sweetness of the pears with their tartness. Then there is the whipped cream. It contrasts beautifully with the warm fruit, and I personally prefer it unsweetened as it doesn't overpower the dish with this extra sugar, but it really complements the natural sweetness of the fruit. Overall, I consider it a pretty successful dish. It is a simple dessert, and it doesn't take a lot of time and effort to make. You can also use any other combination of fruit, just try to keep that nice contrast of sweet and sour to maintain the main characteristic of this crumble. 
Thank you for watching. Since it's a new adventure for me, I'd really appreciate your comments with any feedback on how to make these videos more interesting for you. Have a nice bake!